Before the end of World War I, Britain established an occupied enemy territory administration in April of 1918 in the region of Palestine. Shortly after, Britain proposed a meeting between Faisal Hussein and Kane Wiseman with the intention of reconciling the two sides' conflicting nationalist ambitions and Britain's own assurances given by both sides in the form of the Balfour Declaration and the Hussein McMahon correspondence. The two had their first meeting in June 1918, and after their third meeting on January 3, 1919, the two came to a written signed agreement. The agreement recognised both the Arabs and the Jews' claim to the land and their own linked historical kinship. Face out assist Britain and the Zionists in the fulfilment of the Balfour Declaration in the establishment of a Jewish state. However, still skeptical of the imperial powers to Zions on the region, Faisal added a final proviso that he would only be honoured to uphold the agreement if Britain fulfilled their own assurances of full Arab independence. On January 18, 1919, the Paris Peace Conference began to negotiate the final treaties and territorial claims of the Allied defeated powers of World War I. In June, the League of Nations was formed and a separate conference began with the four Allied powers of Britain, France, Italy and Japan was held in San Remo during April of 1920. At the conference, with only a slight departure to the earlier secret Sykes-Picot agreement made for the end of World War I, France would take control of Syria, while Palestine itself would now fall under direct British control, along with Iraq. But the newly assigned territories would become part of a League of Nations mandate, with the intention that Britain and France would establish proviso governments and administrations, until the territories themselves would eventually be granted full independence and statehood. The agreements made at San Remo were then incorporated into the Treaty of Sevres in August of the same year, and finally ratified by the League of Nations in 1922. During the Paris Peace Conference in August of 1919, a commission was dispatched by the United States to establish the wishes and desires of those in the former Ottoman territories. The report, known as the King Crane Commission, determined that the inhabitants favoured an independent Arab state united under Greater Syria with Faisal as its ruler. The report also voiced its concerns over what it called the extreme Zionist program, saying that the Zionists looked forward to a practically complete dispossession of the non-Jewish inhabitants of Palestine by various forms of purchase, and highlighted the contradictory clauses of the Balfour Declaration. The report also foresaw a potential armed struggle arising from the Zionist conflicting ambitions. The peace conference should not shut its eyes to the fact that the anti-Zionist feeling Palestine and Syria is intense, and not lightly to be flouted. The report recommended rescinding the Balfour Declaration and limiting Jewish immigration. Britain and France ignored the Commission's findings and recommendations and suppressed its publication, fearing the effect it may have on the ongoing peace negotiations and their own plans for the region. The document would not be made public until three years later, in 1922. Meanwhile, criticism of Faisal by Arab leaders for his part in the faisal Wiseman Agreement and negotiations with the occupying powers was growing. Palestinian leaders themselves felt deep resentment over Faisal's agreement to aid the creation of a Jewish state in Palestine. The agreement was also considered to be an act of betrayal, that Faisal would sacrifice Palestine in order to attain his own ambitions. Faisal's hesitation over the agreement grew, and when in March 1920 he was declared King of Greater Syria by the Second General Syrian Congress, he also formally rejected the faisal Wiseman Agreement. The events in Syria triggered a series of attacks against Jewish settlements near the Palestine-Syrian border. The attacks were carried out by Bedouin Arabs, loyal to Faisal, who mistook the settlements for French settlers. While the attacks were not fueled by anti-Zionism itself, the settlers felt that in the failure of the British administration to protect the settlements, and in the light of an ever-growing anti-Zionist sentiment in the region, that an armed defence group was needed to protect the settlements. A right-wing Zionist named Zayev Japinsky, with the help of veteran Harshoma members, and self-defence activists formed the Haganah. By early April, Haganah constituted some 200 members trained in both armed and unarmed self-defence, with an armoury of some 50 rifles and a small number of pistols and grenades. Around the beginning of April, thousands began to gather in Jerusalem for the annual Muslim pilgrimage of Nabi Musa, and delegates from all over Palestine were invited to the city by Jerusalem's mayor, Musa Qazim al-Husseini. Amongst them was Haj Amin al-Husseini, who had returned from Damascus where he had been aiding Faisal. On April 4th, the crowds began demonstrating and chanting nationalistic slogans. The demonstration soon erupted into violence, and the crowd started to riot through the city's Jewish quarter. The violence lasted for three days, only ending on April 7th, after British troops entered the city to quell the riots. 
In its wake, five Jews had been killed and over 200 injured, with four Arabs dead and 23 wounded, mostly by British forces. The riots marked the first outbreak of large-scale anti-Zionist violence in Palestine. Britain at the start of the riots halted all Jewish immigration and immediately after arrested a number of Haganah members, including Jabotinsky, and Palestinian leaders it blamed for inciting riots, including Amin al husseini who had already fled to Syria. A commission of inquiry is created to examine the cause of the riots. The commission, known as the Palin Report, concluded that while Arabs were guilty of starting and citing the riots, they were fueled by legitimate concerns over Jewish immigration and Britain's contradicting assurances of self-determination and the Balfour Declaration. The report also criticised Britain's decision to withdraw troops on April 5th, which led to a continuation of the riot and for the time it took to regain control of the riots afterwards. The report warned of the dangerous situation arising in Palestine and a looming catastrophe. However, because of British apprehension and Zionist objections, the report was never fully published. And in late April, at the San Remo Conference, Britain reiterated its commitment to the Balfour Declaration. In July of 1920, Britain re replaced its occupied enemy territory administration with a civil administration and appointed Jewish politician Herbert Samuel as its High Commissioner. Samuel reopened Palestine to Jewish immigration and lifted the sentences of Jewish Haganah members arrested after the riots and granted general amnesty releasing all Arab rioters and allowing Amin al Hussein to return to Palestine. In July, Faisal was exiled from Syria by French forces. The event was a disaster for the Palestinians who hoped to attain their independence through the establishment of Greater Syria. Palestinian nationalism now began to develop as a unique entity separate and distinct from that of Syrian nationalism. Soon, the right-wing Amin al-Husseini would become the leader of the new movement and the Palestinian national cause, as the tensions between the Palestinians, the British and the Zionists would continue to escalate.